Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video I am bringing to you the angelfish. How to care for them, how to breed them. I remember it was almost 40 years ago when I got my first angelfish and I've loved them ever since. There are so many varieties, so many different colors and we're going to show you a bunch of varieties in this video. Hope you enjoy it. Appreciate you being here. So here we are going to be talking about the freshwater angelfish. The genus is Terephyllum. There are a few different species. We're not going to go into the individual species per se, but I'm going to show you lots and lots of different variants. They are from South America. They usually inhabit the Amazon River and the Amazon River Basin, where the water there is usually relatively slow flowing, at least where they're going to inhabit. The water is usually acidic and we usually have a reduced water hardness. That doesn't necessarily mean we have to match those parameters in an aquarium, and we're gonna talk about that as we go through the video. Now, a lot of the footage that you're seeing, at least right now, is from my fish tanks, but you're gonna be seeing a lot from the fish store and fish room tours that we have done in the past, and I will put playlists for both of those down in the description below if you wanna see a little bit more. Now these fish, I think one of the things that we have to think about, and one of the questions I get asked the most is what types of tanks can they go on and their tank mates? And we're gonna address those things, but one of the things that I think we should consider is a full grown angelfish. The body can be anywhere from five to seven inches. When you include the fins, they can be much, much larger. And in fact, you're going to see one of my angelfish in a 150 that has since moved into this 125 that you're looking at now. That fish was about a foot long from the top of its dorsal fin down to the bottom of its tail. So these fish can get quite large. And so as we begin to talk about tank sizes, keep that in mind. Often we see them at a pet store and they're about the size of a, a nickel or a quarter and they look cute, but they're going to get significantly larger. And so some of the smaller beginner tanks are not appropriate for a full grown angelfish. What I love about them so much, and here is that larger angelfish that was a foot from top to bottom. What I love about these fish so much is the variety. And so they have different finages, as we've already seen. There are veil tails with the really long flowing fins, and then there are the standard angel fish that have shorter fins. But they also have so much color. So we have black angel fish and pearl scales and blues, and we have ones with stripes and albinos, and there's just so much variety. And I think that's one of the things that attracts people to these fish is the striking coloration and the really cool body shape. Now, when you go on the internet, there are lots of opinions in terms of the temperament of these fish. And it's one of the tricky things when keeping angelfish, and that is, are they aggressive? Are they not aggressive? What I would say is angelfish can be aggressive towards one another. They are generally not aggressive towards other fish. And so when it comes to tank mates, we really have to consider that when we're keeping angelfish. Now, these fish are great. They can live up to 10, 12 years. I've had angelfish for a decade. The tank mates, this is where things get a little tricky. What I would try to do is avoid fish that are gonna be extremely active, and I would also avoid fish that are going to be fin nippers. Now, good options. Something right around the size of a neon tetra or a black neon, those are probably about as small as I would go with angelfish because as angelfish become full grown, anything that can fit in their mouth will probably become food, but usually the cardinals and the regular neons, the black neons that are about on the smaller side, about as small as I would want to go, and they would fit in really nicely with these fish. We've kept them with white skirt tetras and black skirt tetras. Emperor tetras were a really good option. Brilliant green rasboras can be very interesting. Even rose line sharks, they get a little bit larger, and while they're a little bit more active, they generally don't inhabit the same areas of the tank, especially if you have a larger tank. You could consider something like hatchet fish, which might be really cool. We have kept them with clown loaches, and that was a pretty good fit. If you're thinking about other types of cichlids, and by the way, the angelfish is a cichlid, the cichlids you have to be really careful with. Uh, something like a ram, German blue ram, Bolivian rams, we've had that combination and it worked without any issues. We've kept them with severums, and that has worked out fairly well. Crebenzis. Electric blue acaras have worked for us. Uh, other types of fish, maybe honey grammies. It would certainly be a good mix if you had angelfish with a large group of quarry cats. The more, the, the fish that you'd have, probably have to think about a little bit more is discus. And that's usually one of the questions that we get is, can you keep angelfish with discus? And I'm about to show you a setup where that works, but you really have to be careful here. 
In terms of the overall activity, the angelfish will sometimes be a little bit more active than the discus. And so some people who have tried to keep them together said, well, it didn't really work that well. The angelfish were a little bit too active and they stressed out my discus. Other people have kept them together without any issues. They do share a lot of the same diet requirements. They share a lot of the same water parameters. So that combination can work, but I would caution you if you're going to try it, you should have a backup plan. Here's that tank I was telling you about where they combine the two and it seemed to work out just fine. The other thing and you can see here is the geophagus. Now I have kept this combination without any problems where I've had geophagus altifrons, I've had geophagus wine milleri in tanks with angelfish, they ignored one another. But anytime you're going to keep angelfish with these more mellow cichlids like discus and geophagus, just make sure you have a backup plan in case it doesn't work out. Now, another good option might be plecos and you could keep some of the rarer plecos that might enjoy that little bit of softer water, at least around neutral or less. What I would definitely not do is keep these fish with any types of barbs that are going to be fin nipping them, things like rainbow sharks, red tail sharks, probably a very bad combination. Most African cichlids, especially the, the traditional cichlids from Lake Tanganyika, Lake Malawi, Lake Victoria, that would probably be a bad mix. A lot of your traditional larger American cichlids like Oscars and Green Terrors and Midas and Red Devils, probably not a good mix. Fast moving fish, one of the mistakes that I made that I later corrected is in our 150 that you saw earlier, I had the angelfish in with tinfoil barbs and ballast sharks and they were just too active. They left each other alone, but they were too active and the angelfish, eventually I moved it into a 125 with other angels and it was happier there. So be careful with the really super overly active fish as well. That may stress out your angelfish. Now when it comes to water parameters, this is another area where I think there's confusion. If you have wild caught angels like the Altums, yes, they are going to need softer water with a lower pH, especially if you want to breed them. But most of your store bought angels are probably bred in fairly standard water parameters, which means somewhere between a pH of six and eight, water hardness could go anywhere from 50 parts per million up to 200 parts per million. For us, our tanks are all right around a pH of eight to 8.2. Our angel fish live happily and healthy in those water parameters, our water hardness is pretty close to 200 parts per million in both the GH and the KH without any issues. So they are, they have some tolerance when it comes to water parameters. The most important thing is to make sure that your water parameters are stable. Now, when it comes to feeding angel fish, this is really fun. When they're young, they are like little puppies. They will eat the food as fast as they possibly can. As they get older, they tend not to do that quite as much, but they will eat most foods that you throw in the tank, at least from my experience. Most types of frozen foods, frozen blood worms, brine shrimp, tube effects. We feed a lot of North Fin Flakes, North Fin uh, Bug Pro. The smaller fish will eat live baby brine. They're really not super picky. I think probably the number one area that I get questions about the most is the tank size. In my opinion, it's going to be a little bit different than a lot of what you see on the internet because I'm thinking about keeping these fish long term. In a lot of places, a 29 gallon or greater is recommended. Now I'm going to be a little bit more cautious and say long term, you're probably going to want a 55 gallon or more because of what I mentioned earlier. You're dealing with a fish with a round body that can be five to seven inches with the fins significantly taller. And in our case with the veil tail, you're talking about a fish that is about a foot from top to bottom and a 29 gallon isn't going to be sufficient. Now for the standard finnage, can you start them out at 29 gallon? Sure, we've done that before and then later move them to larger tanks. But long term, you're probably looking at a taller tank than a 29, a little bit more space would be ideal. Decorating that tank, we really like to use sand, but gravel's perfectly fine. They don't interact with the substrate all that much. You can add rocks and driftwood. Live plants go really, really well with angelfish. They like it. They interact with those plants. They will lay eggs on the plants, as we'll see in a few moments. So Anubius, Java fern, Jungle Val, Crips, all are great options. The one thing I would mention is try not to have really aggressive water flow with your filtration, because if you're, if you're blowing them around, they don't necessarily have a great body shape for dealing with heavy water flow. So you will tire them out. You will stress them out. You might find them in a corner if the water flow is too heavy. 
Now if you want to breed angelfish, it's not too hard to do. They will lay their eggs on leaves, on the intakes of filters. I've even had them lay eggs on heaters before, unfortunately, because the eggs don't survive. If you're really serious and you want to breed angelfish, you can get a breeding cone that's made out of terracotta. They will lay their eggs there. The one thing to keep in mind is new parents will sometimes eat their fry. They will protect the eggs, but then sometimes they will eat the fry. They can be decent parents, but it really depends on the individuals and the pair. Sometimes they will protect their fries. Sometimes they more or less leave them alone. The fry can be fed live baby brine shrimp and then later on transition to flake food. One thing to keep in mind is that angelfish have really big spawns, hundreds and hundreds of offspring. And so if you are finding that a lot of these offspring are surviving, you're going to have to figure out what to do with them and that's not necessarily an easy thing to do so keep that in mind if you are intentionally breeding these fish you're going to have to have an outlet whether that's a pet store friends fish clubs but it can be tough to move hundreds of offspring at a single time but these are great fish and i cannot recommend them highly enough if you have the proper setup the right tank size with the right inhabitants you're going to get a very graceful fish with a lot of color and a really cool body shape and again, if you want to see some suggestions for some really good tank mates, I will put species profiles down in the description below. Appreciate you being here. And if you found this video useful, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.